Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News, on iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I made a video a couple days ago where I was making reckless predictions on fights in 2015. And a number of you in the comments to that video said, Dwyer, what about Leo Santa Cruz versus Guillermo de Gundio? Right, now I'll concede, I was trying to dodge that fight. Right, uh, that's a high profile fight. That's the sport on the top rung. You know, depending on the day of the week, I have different feelings about that fight. But I thought it's only fair to comment on it as of today. Here's what I'm thinking on December 27th, right? I believe that it's a myth that everyone is doing the same sport in boxing, right? Just like in baseball, where young guys straight out of the minor leagues who have 100 mile an hour fastballs believe that baseball is just the game of pitching your A pitch over the middle of the plate and getting it by guys just like those guys are playing a different sport than the mid 30 something pitcher who doesn't have that 100 mile an hour fastball and who's getting by on pitch selection right curveball slider change up right a guy who's playing chess with the batter I believe it's the same way in boxing I believe that certain styles have expiration dates certain styles are only effective for certain age groups and I believe that when you're young and if you are able to marry your youth right at a time when you haven't been hit too hard in the sport right at a time when you're taking risks older fighters who have memories of being hit aren't taking I believe when you're young and if you can marry that youth to volume to aggression if you have stamina and skills and by skills I'm talking about you're two-handed right you're able to throw punches on different planes in other words an opponent can't just hide his head and shut you down offensively right you're throwing body punches you're coming up top you're throwing combinations and if you have some degree of accuracy in other words you're not just aggressive you're translating that aggression into landed punches right then I believe that fight style for young guys is something an older chess player who's relying on defense and precision not youth volume aggression and imprecision right I don't believe the older guy can match that right if Leo Santa Cruz were to fight Guillermo Regondio I would take Leo Santa Cruz in that matchup right simply because I believe Leo Santa Cruz is too young and too high volume for Guillermo Regundio, right? Let me put it into numbers, and I encourage everyone to research Leo Santa Cruz. Understand for 2013, Santa Cruz, according to CompuBox, ranked number one in terms of total punches thrown per round, right? The CompuBox average is 56. This guy, as of a year ago, for calendar year 2013, uh, threw 97 punches around. Think about that. 41 more punches around than the average. Understand, too, in terms of punches landed around, the CompuBox average is 17. 
Leo Santa Cruz last year landed 36 punches around on average, right? Power punches thrown per round. The copy box average is 33. Leo Santa Cruz threw 62. Here's the kicker. Power punches landed per round. Now we talk about throwing punches. This guy's not throwing a lot of jabs. He's throwing a lot of power punches. The CompuBox average for power punches landed per round for calendar year 2013 was 12. Leo Santa Cruz landed 29. Right now keep in mind, at that time, Right? Three of Santa Cruz's last six opponents had held titles. This is not Santa Cruz on the way up. This is Santa Cruz at the top. This is Santa Cruz against world class competition. So just know this. This year, in 2014, he fought a pretty good defensive fighter, Christian Mejares, right in March. Right, March 8th of 2014. Just understand that in that fight over 12 rounds, Leo Santa Cruz threw 1,043 punches. And just understand against the pretty savvy Mahatis, Leo Santa Cruz landed 47% of the 668 power punches that he threw. Right? The point I'm making is simply this. Leo Santa Cruz is at the part of his career where youth is on his side. Right? This is not going to last forever. Right? But he's throwing an inordinate number of punches that older fighters just can't match. Right? He's going to come forward. He's willing to trade. He throws a lot of punches. He throws a lot of power punches. He's relatively accurate with the punches. Right? He's a lead puncher. He's not a counter puncher. Glamour Regundio is a counter punching defensive fighter. Right? Leo Santa Cruz is in exactly the spot, although he doesn't have the power. But he's in exactly the spot where Mike Tyson was in his 20s, right? Relatively early in his career, right? Understand this style doesn't last. Sooner or later, that fastball, right? This fastball style, we'll call it, starts to lose a few miles per hour. Right, suddenly hitters who couldn't catch up with it can catch up with it. Suddenly you need more than a plan A. Right, there'll come a time where Leo Santa Cruz badly needs a back foot. Where Leo Santa Cruz has to come up with strategies to make it through rounds. Just can't rely on the oxygen in his lungs, his youth, and his stamina. But that time is not now. Right? If he fights Guillermo Regondio soon, right, within the next few months, I don't see how Regondio keeps up. Right? Now, Regondio's style is the better style for the long term. Understand, when you look at fighters in their mid to late 30s, as a general rule, the ones who are successful are the ones who have great defense, right? The guys who aren't relying on physical gifts, but who are relying on technical brilliance, right? They know the angles of the punches. They know how to block punches. They know how to look for openings, right? They can go through a round without overexerting themselves. But understand, being a technician has holes, right? I believe as a general rule, hardcore lower volume technicians have a problem with high volume guys. 
who are aggressive, who are going to run red lights, as I like to say, who are not going to fall for the faints. Now, we saw a recent fight that I was wrong about. Sergei Kovalev against Bernard Hopkins. Right? And one of the keys to that fight is the fact that when Bernard Hopkins is covered up, Kovalev is hitting him on his arm. Right? Kovalev is not backing down. He won't allow a chess match to break out. He's on his front foot. He's hunting down Bernard Hopkins. He's throwing volume at Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins is hinting at things. Kovalev is undeterred. Kovalev doesn't spend a lot of time on his back foot wondering what Hopkins is going to do. He's setting the pace. Right? He's in there throwing punches. And keep in mind, Kovalev's not that young, although he is much younger than Bernard Hopkins, right? There's, there's a greater than 15-year difference between those two guys. Well, understand, in my opinion, there might as well be a 15-year age gap between Leo Santa Cruz and Guillermo Regundio. Regundio, who is the shorter fighter, would be in there trying to play defense, looking for openings, waiting for openings. Right, ducking down, daring Santa Cruz to come after him, to come find him. Right, trying to get off blistering counters as Santa Cruz comes forward. The problem is Santa Cruz isn't going to care. He's going to run the red lights. He's going to ignore the implicit threats. He's going to come after Bigundio. Santa Cruz throws punches all over the place. He can hit a guy who's low. He's going to be on his front foot. Judges are going to see a charismatic fighter emptying the gun on a guy who isn't shooting back that much. Right? Regundio might get fooled into underestimating Santa Cruz's youth. So the first round, Regundio might say, okay, he can't maintain this pace for 15 rounds. The second round, Regundio say, okay, he can't maintain this pace. Excuse me. It's 2014, not 1974. I, I didn't mean to say 15 rounds. I should have said 12 rounds. Sports change, right? Regundio might come out and say, okay, well, he can't maintain this for another 11 rounds. And what Regundio is going to find out is what Christian Maharis found out. Did you know in the 12th round of his fight against Christian Maharis, did you know that Leo Santa Cruz threw 112 rounds up uh, punches? 112. That's what youth and stamina do for you. Right? Leo Santa Cruz is 26 years old. He's doing things that older fighters can't do. I think his volume, his aggression, his youth, the fact that he's taking risks that Glamour Regundio wouldn't take, the fact that he's willing to get hit as he empties the gun would give him the advantage over Glamour Regundio. Right? Boxing's rock, paper, scissors. Youth, aggression, and volume can beat older technical skills. Let me close by saying this. There's an interesting fighter out there, Jonathan Banks. He's a heavyweight. He's a trainer for Vladimir Klitschko. He's a disciple of Emmanuel Stewart. Right? This guy knows boxing. I encourage everyone to look at his first fight against Seth Mitchell. He knows how to set up punches. But Jonathan Banks is an older fighter. And even though he knows the technical side of the sport, just look at what his pupil Vladimir Klitschko is doing in the ring. Right? When you watch a Jonathan Banks fight, Banks is a guy who also remembers getting hit in fights. He knows that if he's too aggressive, he's going to get hit. So as a result, he's gun shy. Right? This is a guy with pretty good technical skills. 
He's gun shy in the ring. He won't open up. That's what age in boxing does to you. Right? Banks knows that if he throws this, he might get hit with that. You know, so Banks doesn't throw this. He's waiting for just a few moments in the fight to open up. A young guy like Leo Santa Cruz is the opposite. Right? He comes in the ring and he just sees an opportunity. He's a lead. He's not waiting for his opponent. He's coming forward. His attitude is, hey, my punches matter. If I start opening up, this guy might just be overwhelmed. This might be a short night for me. He's not worried about the things older guys are worried about. You know, wow, if I empty the gun in round two, how am I going to have the stamina to make it to round seven, round eight? That's not Santa Cruz's deal. Santa Cruz knows he can throw over a hundred punches in the twelfth round. I think the volume gap would be too great for Glim over Gundio to deal with. I think when you're dealing with a Leo Santa Cruz, you have to wait for the youth part of the equation to dissipate. Don't you? In other words, if I'm Glamo Regundio, right, I need to literally play the role Bernard Hopkins played in allegedly pursuing a rematch against Roy Jones. I believe there are several years there where Hopkins understood Jones was still too active, right, too athletic, too young for him. So we waited until Jones got older slow down before they had that rematch because had they had the rematch when Roy Jones was still Roy Jones Bernard would have been dealing with too much volume too much athleticism too much youth I think Guillermo Regundio would be dealing with way too much youth and too much volume against Leo Santa Cruz my lean in that fight is toward Leo Santa Cruz to beat Guillermo Regundio, a fighter I consider to be one of the best technicians in the sport. Let me just point out that one of the reasons why I picked Regundio over Nanito Denier was because Denier had started suffering from what Jonathan Banks is suffering from. Right? Denier used to be higher volume. Now he's lower volume. That's what happens to older fighters. Right? They start to see things that they didn't see when they were younger. Right? And they start to get more protective. They remember getting hit with blistering counters in past fights. So they don't open up. Leo Santa Cruz doesn't have those nightmarish memories. He's on his front foot. He's a lead puncher. He's throwing a lot of punches per round against world-class competition. I think he beats Guillermo Regundio. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.